name is Leonard Paul. I'm an evangelist, and I work up in McNary. How many of you know where McNary is at? It's up there on top of the hill, right? Yeah, there's a, a Lutheran church up there, a small one. And that's where I work. Sometimes I come down here uh, to preach White River or East Fork, Canyon Day, sometimes down to San Carlos. But this morning I'm here to lead you in our worship. This morning, you call it chapel service. It's really important. God's word is important for all of us in our lives. Whether you're young or you're old like me, we all need God's word. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and begin now. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to read the Psalms, okay? I read the light print and you read the bold print, the dark one. Okay, we begin. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise Him with the heart and lyre. Praise Him with tambourines and dancing. Praise Him with strings and flutes. Praise Him with the clash of cymbals. Praise Him with the sound and cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Holy, Holy is God, the Lord of hosts. This morning, I'm going to read to you from the Bible. It's going to be from the book of Mark, chapter... Chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. And then we'll talk about it after I read it. We begin. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee, and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man. <clears throat> who was deaf and could hardly talk. And they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephetha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were open, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. That's our reading for this morning. Do you know what it means to be deaf? What does it mean? You can't hear. Yeah, you can't hear. Uh, what about mute? Yes. You can't talk. Yeah. So this was the type of man that Jesus, that the people brought to Jesus because this man couldn't talk and <clears throat> he couldn't hear. And it was probably hard for this man. It, didn't it doesn't tell us how old he was, but there are ways that you can understand them. These, uh, people that are like that, and I'm going to tell you a little story. 
I was a policeman for many years, 25 years, and I retired. And in that time, I met some people that were deaf mutes. It's hard to understand them. Um, when they try to talk, they can't, they just make sounds, different sounds. Understand them, they can't. And then they just look at you because they can't hear. But these people, some of them, you know, they're trained. It's called sign language. With your hands, you know, you communicate. And as a police officer, I had to go. They sent me to a training to learn sign language. It was very hard. And I couldn't really come to where I was good at it. I did learn a little bit. Um, and I was able to communicate with some people. Some, you know, never went to school, some of them. And those are the ones that it was hard to communicate with. So that's the kind of a person that his friends, probably his family, heard about Jesus being in the area. And Jesus has done many miracles, healed many people. And the Bible was just telling us this one part right here about this man. <clears throat> and Jesus is, he can do anything. He can perform miracles. So when they brought this man to him, he, here it tells us in the Bible, Jesus spit on his finger. Okay, he spit on his finger. And he put it in the man's ear. And the man's ears were healed. He was, he could hear. And then, he was able to speak, able to talk. Jesus didn't just say, walk up to the man and say, you're healed, you can hear, you can talk. No, he touched him on his tongue, his ears, and prayed. And when he <clears throat> did that, he looked up to heaven and took like a deep breath. He said, when he's looking at heaven, and then told the man, told him that he could speak. So that shows us that Jesus is a powerful man, has a lot of power. Not only that, but see, he did it to this one man. But this we're talking about several, a long time ago, several thousand years ago. But this Jesus, the one we're learning about, he still takes care of us, watches over us, gives us, gives you good parents, parents that care enough to send you to a school that teaches God's word. So what you are learning here is very important. <clears throat> so when we were born, <clears throat> God opened our ears so that we could hear. Then we were able to speak as we got older. And there are many ways that God, Jesus, watches over us. When you were born and you were baptized, you became a 
child of God. And water was used at your baptism. They put water on your head, on your forehead, to sprinkle water. And they used God's word. Through that, because of that, you were a child of God. God watches you all the time. When you're sleeping, when you're awake, He's always there. So He's always, always taking care of you. <clears throat> and here, when it said that He told, Jesus told the people there not to tell anyone. But people didn't listen. They went out and talked about how, how, how uh, he was doing miracles and healing people. The reason Jesus told him not to tell anyone was because he wanted the people to hear God's word. Not to really look at the miracles that he was doing. He wanted to know more of God's word. That's, that's why he was telling them not to say anything. But you know, we don't do that anymore. We always talk about Jesus. That's why I'm here this morning telling you about God's word, speaking to you. We don't keep it to ourselves. What the people wanted during that time was a leader that would take care of them here on this earth, provide food for them, healing, and to guide them in their <clears throat> earthly life. But Jesus came for one reason. He came to die for us on the cross because of our sins. We all sin, all of us. And we're forgiven. Each time we ask, pray to God and Jesus to forgive us because we have done something wrong. He's a forgiving God. <clears throat> so remember that that we have a powerful God and Jesus is God too you know we have God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit it's all God he's Jesus and he's also the Holy Spirit and God at the same time So remember that you always have someone watching over you. That's Jesus. When you're in trouble, when you need help, pray. Look to Jesus and he'll help you. He'll help you in a way that he knows is best for you. So there, nobody can say, I have no one to turn to. There's nobody. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Somebody does love you. And that's Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Go ahead and sing our hymn now. 319. <laughs>
Okay, we're going to pray the Luther's morning prayer, okay? We begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. Keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. Into your hands I commend my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Now, children, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That's our service for this morning.